let's um learn about Twitch while I eat food. And welcome to the 2022 Twitch Iceberg. This iceberg will not only include a slew of new topics, events, and stories, but also updates to previous topics as new information has been presented since, or just flat out errors on my part that need correcting. We have seven levels, so if some topics aren't covered heavily, I apologize. I'll link sources for events and people who I feel like I can't do justice to. Level 1. There seemed to be confusion in the 2021 Twitch iceberg regarding placements of topics. Think of level 1 as someone who is aware of Twitch as a platform, but doesn't really watch anyone there at all. Level 7, of course, would be someone who's been all around Twitch and Justin TV for years. Minecraft's resurgence. I previously said that Dream was one of the driving reasons why Minecraft became extremely popular again. While true, he was not the catalyst, as Dream SMP was created in April of 2020. Call Me Carson and C Scoop would create SMP Live in March of 2019, an always live Minecraft server. They invited 10 more content creators to stream their POVs anytime they're on the server. The server ran for about a year before it ended on January 1st, 2020. There were talks of a season two, but yeah, that didn't Did happen. Carson then go to Pokemane, jail what a way something? to start off 2022, a new Pokemane drama. So this one involved her, Gideon, and surprisingly enough, Ninja. It started out with Gideon sending his viewers to raid her chat. Yo, chat, 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 chat. Guys, 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 guys. Follow her, follow her, follow her, follow her right now, y'all. Follow her right now. Follow her right now. We're going to be back, y'all. This in turn got Gideon perma banned for conducting a hate raid on his first day as a partnered streamer. Twitch! Twitch! Wait, I didn't realize it was his first day as a partnered streamer. Damn. The following days, Ninja got involved by saying that he'll do what he can do involving Gideon's permaban. In turn, having that clip get sent everywhere. I could send him, I could send a text message to my representative and be like, from Gideon says he's sorry. After Pokimane saw it, Jessica Blevins, who is Ninja's wife, told her that Ninja never tried to get Gideon unbanned. Then Ninja sent her this DM and Jessica followed up with this insane DM. While all this was happening, Gideon and Pokimane met up in real life and made a video and officially wife. squashing the beef. So, in the end, Ninja and Ninja's wife yet again have another L underneath their belt. <laughs> Twitch yeah, security do. breach. On October 6, 2021, Twitch's Twitter account tweeted out this in a response to a 125 gigabyte folder posted on 4chan. The folder contained the history of Twitch's source code, payouts to streamers since 2019, and an unreleased competitor to Steam, and a whole lot more. This almost instantaneously caught. I remember when this happened, and like everyone was memeing about it. Like I'm sure that he's gonna talk about it. But like, also, I think it's hilarious. Like I know I just kind of paused at this at a perfect time. But Admiral Baru, um, it's a name. I don't know why it just struck this chord with me. I don't think I've watched his content in a really long time. Actually, I kind of want to see. I haven't watched his content in like years, like years. But I remember that he was like a YouTube, not he had like YouTube. Uh, Oh, what's the word? He had like YouTube. Um, he had like YouTube videos on Borderlands, and he did like insane Borderlands Two stuff. That's how I knew about him. I didn't realize he was still so big. Wow, it's kind of on me for falling off with him, but he's bigger than like Sykuno, Doctor Lupo, which are like it's kind of funny because like you feel like Doctor Lupo and Sykuno would be like bigger names. Cause streamers on Twitter to both freak out and begin messing around <coughs> by taking their assigned number from the payout list and putting it in their name. Then websites and Chrome extensions started popping up and categorizing streamers by how high they were on the list. Oddly enough, no passwords were leaked and everyone just kind of forgot about it and went back to business as usual. OTV Rust Server. What happens when you throw almost every top Twitch streamer into a Rust server together? Surely nothing but everlasting friendships and memories.
third third golden boy the rust servers that happened in 2021 started out great but then some people killed other people those people became enraged people wanted to role play instead of play and a million stream sniping accusations later Oh, well, well, well. Dude, 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 dude. Listen, this guy is literally sniping, though. That's so fucking cringe. And the era of Rust so servers died bad. out faster than any other Twitch meta I have ever seen. No pixel. What happens when you throw almost every top streamer into a GTA 5 server together? Surely nothing but everlasting friendships and memories. This motherfucker XQC just has something to fucking say. <laughs> this guy shouldn't even be on the server. <laughs> like, what the That's fuck so is this? Wrong. No Pixel is a heavily modded GTA 5 server that allows streamers and really anyone who applies and gets whitelisted to create a character and roleplay with other people in the I server. Like now, this is still kind of a big thing, isn't it? Playing at once, and you're bound to run into some issues. People stream sniping, extremely petty drama, and in the case of Penta and Zuma. I got him under arrest. Don't worry. Things could escalate even further. After the end of that argument, they went to Twitter. Uh, soy adults that can't that can't contain their emotions, probably raised by shitty single mothers who were told their you know told them their whole life it's okay you're just competitive. An optic M. What? <laughs> I don't remember this. Bose just it's funny straight though. up says he'll pay a COD fan to knock out Penta in his next IRL stream. I know COD characters have a history of being aggravating to deal with, but doing this is obviously just taking it to a whole unnecessary level. Gambling. After people got bored burning their money with Pokemon cards, a ton of streamers decided to burn their money spinning slots. Throughout the summer of 2021, gambling on various websites became extremely popular. Huge debates on whether or not it was morally okay to stream gambling with a large chunk of... Don't gamble, guys. You're gonna lose. Every time I've ever gambled, I've lost, except for once when I was able to break even. But... Just don't gamble. It's honestly, like, find something else that encourages serotonin in your brain. Like, uh, YouTube. Like, watching my videos on YouTube. Which you should do. If you're here in the live stream, uh, be sure to check out my YouTube channel, which is right here because we're streaming live on YouTube. So, go check out the videos that I post. I make fun videos. Hopefully they're fun uh stream highlights and i am working on some off stream stuff that's going to be getting uploaded here in the next few days and it's just an all-around fun time uh trying to get to 50 subs before the end of the month i don't know if we're gonna make it but we might and it'd be a great time so uh if you guys are seeing this part wait uh so if you guys are seeing this part of the video uh midstream plug be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below and in the comment section or in chat right now, if you're here live, tell me what game you are most excited for from the earlier GamesCon and where do you stand on the Twitch iceberg? I don't think I'm going to know anything past level one, but I might. Also, remember, gambling is not a good thing unless you have money that you could literally light on fire because it means so little to you. Never gamble. Of all users on Twitch being under 18. I've oh, worked no. with. No, I've you don't get to do that. I have worked no. with. And no. Also, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let it finish. Wait. Million dollar deals getting leaked. Streamers having to move to different countries to continue gambling. Even if it wasn't, it all felt extremely shady. Trainwrecks would be the main streamer involved with gambling streams. And to this day, everyone has dropped it. But he is still going strong with the gambling streams. Doesn't he Ludwig's get paid like so now, much reason, money? Every streamer in the past year has done a subathon. Ludwig's subathon was an event that everyone on Twitch knows about, with it ending after 31 days and a grand total of 282,000 subscribers, which, with a little Twitch Damn. math, we can see comes out to a cool $705,000 at minimum. I think that's wrong. Um, because that's a 50 50 split, because subs are $5. And I think by time of the subathon, Ludwig had the 70 30 split. So, 
wouldn't that be more like three dollars which means that there'd be an extra cool like hundred thousand i don't know if i can do that math but if we say that that's like he probably made closer to like eight or nine hundred thousand dollars but minimum with ludwig donating every single sub from the final day to saint jude's and the humane society and a dollar for every sub from the previous 29 days to no kid hungry level two dr disrespect ban starting wait so i didn't realize i knew ludwig's a good guy like i'm a ludwig stan i enjoy his content and stuff right but i didn't realize he donated all the money on the last day to uh charity that's really awesome now didn't dr disrespect get banned for live streaming a bathroom in which there was a minor i might be totally off base there but i think that's what it was also he is over here streaming on youtube i know that much and he's still going so like i don't know level two, we have an update to dr disrespect i took a huge ass cut in pay in no one knew why he got banned and it stayed that way until march 10th of 2022 when doc himself tweeted out moving on with this picture this of course got people curious if that would mean that he would return to twitch but he nipped that in the bud quickly with this reply but again to this day there has still not been a definitive reason given to the public as to why he was originally banned on twitch i bought a whole bunch of shungite rocks do you know what shungite is fedmeister this is an update for the fedmeister situation an extremely brief recap, he was removed from the OTB streamer house in 2020 after some very serious allegations from other OTB members were brought up. He then went silent for a year, and in June 2021, he came back with a video titled, Changing My Life. Almost immediately, people started to notice how similar this video was to when Albert made a comeback. The only difference was that Albert's apology video was viewed in a much more genuine light by most people than Fedmeister's was. Fedmeister's video was perceived as a long self-ego boost, and his return stream was a whole lot of nothing. I, I remember hearing about this. This is literally like, I made a bunch of money off of you guys, and I said some horrible things. So now I'm going to take a year, and I'm going to literally use my money, my wealth and privilege, to travel the world and make a YouTube video about it. So not only am I doing horrible, shitty things that got me kicked out of OTV, I'm going to use the money I made from that to make more people feel bad about their living situations by flexing on it on the internet. Just my hot take. Thing with him pulling a T. Martin and streaming <clears throat> with his new dog in frame the whole time. Uh, T. Martin. disappeared again in December of 2021 with no update since. Forsen's community. You ever wonder where the majority of the Twitch memes and emotes come from? The self-proclaimed Forsen buys are responsible for a great many aspects of Twitch culture, ranging from Twitch music, Forsen CD, Bat Chest, and 30 player stream sniping lobbies, just to name a few. Depending on who you ask, you'll get a slew of different opinions on the community from some people calling them toxic to just people being general fans and viewers. Whatever your opinion is on the community, they do play a huge part in making things, people, and emotes popular in the Twitch space. And we have that community to thank for a lot of what we love about Twitch in its current year. Standing here with Forsen. The hot tub meta. In 2021, streamers <laughs> Indie Fox and Amaranth began oh to stream in kiddie pools. They weren't actually hot tubs to my disappointment. Sooner than later, this grabbed the attention of every streamer on the platform and every commentary channel on YouTube and LSF. This slingshotted them both into tens of thousands of viewers. Both streamers Indie Fox and Amaranth, among many other names, were banned a few different times throughout the course of this meta. Ultimately, in the end, Indie Fox was permabanned after six previous bans in six months' time. During all of that, many streamers joined in the permabanned. hot tub streams, with some even collabing with Amaranth and Indie Fox for some hot tub <coughs> action themselves. Everyone had an opinion on this, and you can just search up the words hot tub streamers, and you'll find plenty of different <laughs> takes on this, varying from it's the girl's fault that this is happening, or that it's Twitch's fault for having dog shit TOS. The entire thing was very controversial, but also very entertaining to watch at the same time, because there was all of this discourse that came with it. Dark Viper AU. A more recent incident on I the list, we have the case of Dark Viper AU, who in February of 2022 posted a script for a video about reaction streamers. Now, a lot of the pages on this 14-page document read pretty okay, but there's a small section 
that's a little bit odd, which makes a comparison about reactionary content and people who commit sexual assault. Th what the fuck? I, I don't want these words on the screen, so I'm going to read it. In other words, if you feel pressured to not cause a fuss about someone stealing your content, perhaps due to fearing the powerful reactors and their audiences will threaten your livelihood with backlash, or if you are not knowledgeable enough to say no, or you physically can't say no, wait. You're not knowledgeable enough to say... Okay, wait, fuck it. I'm just going to show it. Not knowledgeable enough to say no. You didn't know another person is out there exploiting your labor. Or you physically cannot say no. Maybe because the reactor has spiked your drink at a party. If you meet a reactor at a party, I suggest covering your glass or outright telling them you don't want them to fuck you. Because they seem keen to take a person's silence for content. Come again? Does bro not understand what fair use is? I mean, comparing reacting to the R word seems like it, it's he's trying to get like a uh, emotional response out of it. I don't know. But the big R word, guys, is very bad. You should never joke about it, and you should never do it. You are all great people, I'm sure, <clears throat> who deserve to find someone that wants to do that with you. You should never try to force someone to do that with you because it's not cool. And if you do think that's cool, let me know in the chat or the comments, and I'll just outright ban you. So that's not the type of community that we want here. It's not something we support. Misogyny and sexism have no place here. So just putting that out there flat. You can come back. I will literally have this in the video so you guys will remember. And I will use this as the reason if there's ever anything in the future. But let's go. Let's go on, though. This document obviously sparked controversy among many people, but the main parties involved were Moist Critical and Dark Viper <laughs> AU, who eventually hashed it out playing GeoGuessr. Listen, Doug, Summer wrote this. I have no idea if this is actually true or not. Listen, <laughs> I have no fucking clue. Artesian Build CEO. The poor employees of this company had their jobs ruined by one egotistical CEO. R.I.P. Artesian Builds. This guy's a piece of shit. But I do think OTK has a new um, Starforge, which I think is kind of sounding artesian buildy, but not at all scummy. I think that they're just going to stream the building of the computers. There's not going to be like the ambassador bullshit. Honestly, what this guy did with artesian build, like the exploiting of people's communities just to grow his community is disgusting. Like, if this guy, honestly, I know it's not illegal, but I feel like now there are going to be laws that will make what he did illegal because it is maybe not illegal, but it's just so exploitative. And, I mean, even here in this screenshot, like this image where I paused right here, you can see they're building a case. They're building a computer for one of their quote unquote ambassadors. Right. And like, I'm sure you guys all know this, but like I just, this as a computer builder, like that's my, like my other job. I do tech stuff, but like not on YouTube or anything, at least not yet, but like building computers and literally like going from a B660 to a Z960 motherboard is not that big like it's probably like an eighth of the money that it costs them to get whatever they required the thing as upgrading to 32 gigabytes of ram honestly if you're making pcs for content creators they need a minimum of 32 gigabytes of ram and a minimum they need way more storage than that
And then they start them with a Cooler Master. I'm guessing that's a Hyper 212 Evo. And then they go to a Corsair H100. Like, they're literally, like, <laughs> so scummy. I don't want to talk about it more. I'm going to get mad. Raffle giving away a PC to potentially any ambassador that decided to enter this giveaway. Streamer Kaya Pia won the giveaway, but when she did, the CEO of the company, Noah Katz, began judging her social media pages while live on the official Artesian Builds company Twitch page. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a no. Uh, less than one follower gained per day. This caused a large majority of people in the Twitch community uh -oh. to instantly turn on the dude. A lot of ambassadors and partners with the company rescinded their deals with Artesian. One of the biggest notably being OTK, one of the biggest organizations Yo, on Twitch at the OTK Starforge Labs. Done by just one Starforge person was so bad that the company ultimately ceased all of their operations. And the people that work there are freaked the fuck out that they are permanently tied to Noah's selfish and poor decisions. Daquan Thumhouse, one of the biggest Fortnite content creators, Daquan dominated Twitch and YouTube, but seemingly disappeared off of social media for years. He made a comeback in 2021, getting signed to NRG and this. announcing a huge streamer house with him and Hamlins being the biggest ones involved. Their return stream averaged 70,000 viewers and peaked at 90,000. But again, two months went by and there was radio silence until Daquan went live in January of 2022 to explain that everything fell through due to horrible internet issues and the house being more or less scuffed with broken air conditioning and showers. Daquan even explained that he doesn't know if he still has a contract with NRG. His last stream was on February 11th of this year, and I hope that everything is well with him and Hamlin's. Level 3, Among That's Us's bad. popularity. I previously stated that Soda Poppin popularized and created the formula in which you have players in a call and they mute like after they die, but this was actually wrong. It was Admiral Bulldog who made the formula popular. My apologies. Kotaku. Kotaku is on here for them being notoriously awful at covering anything on Twitch. With them oh, recently so vomiting out an article about the streamer awards. Could it be something that was said there? Maybe a controversial creator was invited. Or maybe something insane happened that required immediate coverage. They wrote a whole article about the trophy being Pepe the Frog, which is already wrong. That's a goddamn peepo. If you even casually browse Twitch, <laughs> I'm sure this coming year, you'll see plenty of Kotaku. Hate raids. These specific hate raids began in the summer of 2021, with people setting up thousands and thousands of bot accounts to go into streamers' chats to spam either racist or homophobic messages. This in turn caused streamers to create the Day Off Twitch movement and decide not to stream on September 1st. This became controversial in itself, with people having strong opinions on either going live or not going live. I read the comments in the thread, they're right. Nobody gives a fuck if you take a day off. Nobody knows who you are. If every other big streamer, if people got together and they said, we're all going to collectively do it, I would do it in a heartbeat, right? The aftermath of the event was around a 1 million viewer loss during peak hours and 500,000 views lost during normal hours. On the 30th of September, there was a blog post by Twitch in which they showed off That's new two-factor authentication features to better protect chat rooms from being raided. As of March 2022... There have been a new form of hate raids by people on a separate website sending their viewers to streamers chats and spamming homophobic and racist messages, although this time Twitch was much quicker with identifying the issue and getting rid of the accounts. I'm almost positive this will be a topic I'll have to update as I'm sure this is just the start of these kind of raids. Boys, why can't people just be nice? Like, it, I mean, like, already, like, people who stream and stuff there's there's a threshold and like it's terrifying putting yourself out there right like being like i'm gonna put my face on the internet i'm gonna share my ideas and i'm gonna live stream all of it for anyone to say see like <sighs> there is enough bad shit already and if people are trying to, like, foster communities and, like, have a good time and, like, be happy and, like, you know, I just don't see why. I just, I don't understand it. I don't, I don't want to get into it. The C word. In December of 2021, two of Hassan's moderators were banned for saying cracker. I'm sorry. I mean the C word. This caused Hassan to go live, and by the end of it, he caught a oh. seven-day ban. You dumb Cracker bitch. Other streamers who were banned for saying Cracker were Vouch, Frost, Bruce, Drop em Off, and Just the Minx, just to name a few. You had absolutely every streamer <laughs> under the sun making jokes and poking fun at it. I found some crackers. Let me eat them up all up. 
Bro, what'd you say? <laughs> Definitely one of the most ridiculous months on Twitch that year. Germa 985. Germa as a whole is on this list for just how unique some of his streams are. Whether it be him going out and doing an archaeology stream and driving around an excavator, or his more recent huge stream, The Dollhouse, in which chat controlled whatever he did like a real-life Sims character. Germa is most definitely one of the most interesting and entertaining streamers. Plus, his community is hell-bent on believing that he is a convicted serial killer. Logic finessed Twitch. In 2020, Logic signed a seven-figure deal with Twitch to stream there. Damn. Like, you know, now be a partner with Twitch is insane. He went live for 126 hours the whole entire year. Anybody notice that my, my gun is black and white? So at minimum, with a million dollars, he made around $8,000 an hour. I don't really know how contracts work, but this seems like Logic made out like a bandit in this deal. He last streamed on October 2021 for three hours. Bat Chest, the most talked about emote in 2021. Bat Chest blew up due to Forsen's community, and once it spread to other big streamers, this emote just absolutely exploded in terms of popularity. This also propped up one of the best additions to the Twitch community in a while, Johnny Carwash or Curtis Scott. As the face of the emote, he accepted the memes with open arms, and he was very well recepted within the community as well. Everyone loves Curtis. This is the first time Twitch has had a positive poster boy for their platform ever since Gutex was removed as PogChamp back in 2021. And Twitch has not capitalized on it, which is super unfortunate to see. Has Twitch or anyone from there reached out to like have you involved or use your face? The actual honest answer is, is not a damn thing. Not a, nothing from nobody. I mean, Curtis doesn't even accept donations. All the money he receives gets donated back to various charities, even sub and bit money. I just hope they reach out to him one day, especially since he was a Twitch admin on the platform up until 2016. Level four, Ice Poseidon's ban. Just a quick update to the Ice Poseidon ban and Ice as a whole. In January of 2022, it was revealed that he was involved in a huge crypto scam and he made out around $500,000. There's an amazing video. That's not right. No, 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 no. I just watched an update on this. He emptied out. There was like four hundred and like thirty thousand dollars in their bank account for the crypto, and he took like three hundred and eighty thousand of it. So, what he did is fucking disgusting, right? Like what Ice Poseidon did is horrible. But it definitely wasn't half a mil. It was a Leo little by bit Coffeezilla, less. In which he actually confronts but it's still a shitload of money. But honestly, like, I feel like Ice Poseidon, half a million dollars to someone like him, probably, like, it wasn't worth it to him to steal that money. Unless he just did it for the sake of do, doing it. Because, like, half a million dollars, I'm sure he probably made more than that in a year from brand deals and stuff. So, like, why? It's not like he needed quick cash. I don't know. It, it seems like there's something inherently wrong with him that he chose to scam every these people with the CX coin. He didn't – I don't think there was ever a good intention in that project. I think the plan was always to scam, and I think he probably saw the crypto winter and pulled the money when he thought it was before he thought it was going to crash because he always planned on doing that, and it didn't make him as much money as he thought. He probably thought – that just like NFTs or something, it was going to make him a multimillionaire overnight, and then he could scam everyone and, like, just disappear. But that's not what happened. At least that's what I, my personal opinion, I don't know. And Ice Poseidon just openly admits to everything, and it really seems like he sees no problem in what he did. The money that's not yours that you took from the project, even though you would failed to deliver. I mean, I'm not really sure what you want me to say, but yeah. But yes... This update is just to let you all know that this dude is never getting unbanned from Twitch. CX Network. Previously, I said the downfall of CX was when they were swatted and Ice Poseidon created a video attempting to distance himself from that group of people, but this was wrong. Those events occurred at the tail end of everything. The real beginning of the end was the string of streams all at a resort in Horseshoe Bay, Texas. The actions displayed by Ice and his crew...
Wait, after being caught with his ex girlfriend with his ex, I subsided and pretends he did not fan things with her off stream. During later his was nothing less than dehumanizing. He secretly brought his girlfriend Caroline to the resort and kept her away from the cameras, having her stay in the room the whole day. Viewers somehow found out she was there, and in response, Ice Poseidon attempted to sleep with another girl who was there for the trip. This caused scene after scene out in public, near the pool, and in hallways. Ew, it's professional to go out and slap Kaylee when you're jealous. Fucking been out with you, dude. When we're fucking <laughs> yeah, no shit, cause I'm fucking hot. What do you mean? I just tried to help you. Well, I just tried to you're, help you. you're the one who caused the security to be on our ass in the first place. Zero privacy was given as multiple cameras were on fuck? her and ICE the whole time. Police became involved, and still, the cameras stayed live. The way this girl was treated was just fucked up. Entirely. Wait, what? The cameras stayed live. The way this girl was Police say the group can stay if Ice and his ex stay in different rooms. His ex refuses to leave after being wrongfully targeted once to talk to Ice privately. Ice was treated was just fucked up, entirely unjustified, and these streams are where a large community divide began. I have been gone. You, I literally you won't, sit in you my won't, room. You just won't yesterday, go. I was in the room all day yesterday alone. I don't know what to do. Oh, no, no, I don't want that. I want, I want the police. <laughs> I don't know what to do. The police. Even someone was donating hella messed up ice. We're on Caroline's side. So they can't take her out of the room. On one end, people explained this is where they lost any remaining respect they had for ice. This is and so And the other fucked. side just ate this kind of degenerate content up. Phantom Lord. Phantom Lord won his lawsuit against Twitch. I wasn't aware of this, but this dude wanted $35 million from Twitch. My case is <laughs> Wait, what? towards $35 million plus um, in damages. Well... He got $20,000. He took to Twitter to say this was a huge win for streamers. His reasoning was because now Twitch can't perma you off the platform for no reason or ban you for no reason. I don't think there has been any change to how the way Twitch does their bans since then. So not only are you a scammer, Phantom Lord, you wasted five years for $20,000. Congratulations. Mitch Jones and Trainwreck Saga. When you think of Twitch duos, you instantly think of Tyler1 and Greek or XQC and Moxie. But one of the most entertaining duos on Twitch was Mitch Jones and Trainwreck back in 2017. These two would have some of the most memorable streams, whether it be their IRL streams or just the normal desktop streams. Or they would get into absolute screaming matches with each other. This ended up with them having actual beef, I suppose. Maybe? But in 2021, an S-Fan clip featuring them joking around will put the rumors that they hate each other to rest. Come on, Mitch. What? Come on, bro. All right, I'm coming, bro. So, like I said, it was three years ago. Hassan. 821. When talking about Hassan, I am not talking about the Twitch staff, but instead, I'm talking about the bean-sized head streamer, who infamously, on August 21st, 2019, had this clip blow up. This is so insane. America deserved 9-11, dude. Fuck it. I'm saying it. What the, the video fuck? Game. This would cause him to catch a seven-day ban, and also become one of his community's go-to chat spams, with his community members making videos he and edits that. of the incident. Did you mean that? Yeah. <laughs> Raj Patel. This one a lot of you may already know, but Mr. Austin Show used to go under the alias Raj Patel, where he ran the game show Raj Royale and other variations like Raj Lorette. Not only did Austin popularize the game show format on Twitch, but when watching these VODs and clips, just the sheer amount of top streamers involved with these streams was insane. Now, I'm not saying these game shows directly blew them up, but having all these faces interacting brought out the best or worse than them, allowing them to be clipped and shipped to LSF and Twitter and wherever. Uh, is it my turn to cause some <laughs> oh, drama? Oh, live stream for no. you. Oh, yeah, baby, let's okay, go. Let me cause some drama, bro. Let's fucking do it, bitch. Go ahead, babe. Austin's impact on Twitch with these game shows is most definitely an achievement. He truly was before his time. Isn't he? With how popular uh, this game show form. Isn't Austin uh, signed with 100 Thieves now, I think? Matt is now on Twitch. OBS and Streamlabs drama. Near the end of 2021, OBS came out on Twitter calling out Streamlabs for not taking the OBS part of Streamlabs OBS out of their name. They even said before the Streamlabs yeah. OBS was released, they came to them and asked about it. To which OBS said no, 
Take the OBS out your name. They didn't listen. And in the same tweet, OBS said that Streamlabs was attempting to file a trademark for the full name Streamlabs OBS. All this was already a lot. And then another application named no, Lightstream I remember tweeted this. out this, this picture showing hilarious. that Streamlabs fully copied their whole website layout. And they didn't even have the decency to change the user reviews at the bottom of the website. Just a straight one-to-one -one copy paste. It all ended with Streamlabs tweeting out that they are removing OBS from their name. I already know that the Streamlabs booth at TwitchCon this year is going to be extremely awkward. 7TV. Throughout the years on Twitch, Frankerface Z and Better TTV have been the only two extensions for Twitch that have had any sort of popularity behind them. Following the removal of Gutex as PogChamp and Better TTV removing Zulo, the extension 7TV began development. The extension was extremely niche, really being only used in some big streamers' chat rooms. I caught one of the extension with no prior knowledge other than the fact that it was a new extension with some push behind it and fully vouched for it. Admittedly, that was a mistake as it was brought to my attention that there were major TOS issues with the website and some questionable private emotes. There is still discussion of whether oh. the extension is good or not. And I will say basically a year later, the difference between the extension then and now is night and day. They've recruited moderators from all over the Twitch community and have cleaned up the TOS nonsense. But I do oh. enjoy the extension, but the shaky start is something I think people should at least be aware of. Level five, the Angel of Shibuya. Previously, I said the Angel of Shibuya was the face of Kappa, Josh Decino, which is just completely wrong. The Angel of Shibuya is an IRL streamer named Rob CD. I believe I got confused when researching because they looked so similar. Hassan, now, now, now. When talking about Hassan, I am not talking about the corn kernel sized head streamer, but instead the Twitch staff. Just an update to him after he was removed as Twitch staff after multiple allegations and I remember silent. about this. Well, he hasn't oh my tweeted God. since 2020, but in this time away from Twitch, he became a crypto bro with his last liked tweet from January 2022 being a Twitch metaverse tournament type thing. CSGO Ambi. Ew. On January 27th, 2022, a streamer by the name of CSGO Ambi finished a CSGO game and just began to shave his pubes live on stream. Nobody knows why, but he did it. <laughs> and he received a permaban. Truly one of the most confusing events I've seen on Twitch. I don't think we will ever get an explanation what? on why he decided then and there what? it was time to trim the hedges. Crow. By far one of the Bro. most requested people to be added to the iceberg. Now when reading comments, <coughs> threads, and Twitter replies about this guy, he was apparently one of the most unhinged CSGO streamers, allegedly snorting coke, buying hookers, and just opening up thousands of dollars worth of CSGO cases on stream. But most importantly, breaking shit. <laughs> I say allegedly because there's absolutely nothing on this guy. VODs, clips, his Twitter, YouTube, everything is just gone, wiped clean. When clicking any sort of Crow montage video, it's claimed by Crow Reviews, or in some cases, just the name Crow itself. In 2018, a channel named Mr. Reviewer started uploading videos with two public ones and one unlisted video showing off a Lamborghini Aventador. And in the comments, he hearted a comment telling him to come back to streaming. It seems Crow has a very niche cult-like following, with even pros and streamers like Sean Garris and Alinity referencing him in a tweet from March of 2020. This guy truly is something that deserves much more research. I instantly became invested upon finding out everything had been scrubbed clean. From the clips yeah, I was able to find, it did look like these comments were himself. telling the truth. But my favorite one I stumbled upon was a clip of him just shitting himself, then ending stream. Dude, I'll take your Witcher 2 sticker and stick it in my ass. Oh. I just shot myself. I, I really need to go. Like Omhi and Motar 2K. <laughs> oh my god, no he did it. heard of in a very... <laughs> No, he didn't. Did he actually do that? He actually shit himself. <coughs> Very oh my god. Time. But this dude is the reason why people who donate a ton of money to streamers are called oilers. From what we know about him, he comes from a family of royalty from the Middle East, Wait, and what? people refer to him as Motar 2K. Omhai is a name you probably haven't heard of in a very, very long time. But this dude is the reason why people who donate a ton of money to streamers are called oilers. From what we know about him, he comes from a family of royalty from the Middle East, and people refer to them as oil princes. Omhai was really the first person to donate absolutely obscene amounts of money to people like Soda Poppin and Wreckful. The video of Soda receiving $21,000 in one stream from him was one of the first videos I ever watched about Twitch. That's not what you're supposed to do with money! Why? <laughs> Omhai! Why? 
Why do you do this? Omhai would actually inspire another viewer by the name Motar2k to do the exact same thing. Although Motar almost exclusively sent money to CSGO streamers with a whole 33 minute compilation of donations to people like Pasha Biceps, Shroud, Scream, and a ton of other pro CSGO players. This practice has kind of died down a bit. I rarely see huge donations anymore. Instead, nowadays people just gift a shit ton of subs to people. The animal yeah. murderer. Back when Austin's show was still Raj Patel, he was hosting a game show and asked, what was the worst thing you've ever done? To which streamer, Aquala Gamer, explained she worked as a vet and would kill the pets of people who made her mad. I used to work as a veterinary technician, so I once oh. killed my dog. Oh. Office. What the fuck? Bro, this girl killed someone's dog because she didn't like them. What? That's like you got. You should go to jail for that. On purpose? What the it's fuck? You, you know. Austin tries to save her by saying that of course that it was a joke and asking her if she feels bad. To which she responds with this: <laughs> Just say it was an accident. That is. <laughs> it was a. It was an accident. Oh my god! Do you regret it? I mean, shitty dog, shitty person. Okay, all right. It's really just unsettling how little emotion she displayed. When she explained that the she was perfectly healthy animals while working as a vet, clicking to her Twitter shows what the actual fuck deleted her account permanently. Emily is pro. This is the story of Emily is pro, the RuneScape streamer who allegedly faked cancer. In a long deleted VOD, Emily explained that she has chronic lymphatic leukemia, a kind of cancer that doesn't have too many severe side effects. This caused many RuneScape streamers to become skeptical of Emily, saying that she was faking cancer for donations and subs. Ice Poseidon's community would be the main group of people to relentlessly stream snipe and of donate, course. saying that she faked cancer. But we're going to end it once and for all. Did Emily fake cancer? Shake 20 it, mil. Don't break it. Then this clip of RS Glory and Gold saying she faked cancer became extremely popular with all of Twitch at the time. Emily only faked cancer once. Emily only faked cancer once. Yahoo! Yahoo! She ended up having a breaking point on stream one day and the began fuck? talking about how she wished she had never talked about the cancer. The shit that I have to go through like every single fucking day, like every day, how much shit that I put up with, like every single day. To this day, there is actually still zero definitive proof that she did fake cancer. What do you all think? Dallas Galley. Why the would name you fake Dallas Galley cancer? may not ring any bells to viewers, but I confidently believe Dallas is known by more streamers than he is by viewers. Soda, I'm a thousand miles away, but girl, tonight you look so pretty. Referred to as things like Twitch's biggest simp, Dallas has piqued the interest of many in the Twitch community with his unusual tweets. Fuck you, five inch dick. Go down, you horny piece of shit. A fantastic mini documentary on the channel, <laughs> Built Different, highlights this a lot better than what I can do on what makes Dallas so unique. His channel may be tucked away in the far corners of Twitch, but it is truly a hidden gem when you end up catching him live. Give us a lion roar. Roar! Level 6, Day 9. An extremely light topic to start off Level 6. It was and day a more nine. fun fact more than anything. But Day 9 was the first ever streamer to receive a sub button. And it stayed like that for a while. As the way Twitch went about giving a sub button was hard coding it into their website. Meaning only a programmer would be the one who can go in there and give or take away sub buttons. Instead of it being someone like an admin just ticking a box or pressing yes oh. to the menu. The Bob7 Manifesto, one of the most documented Twitch dramas of all time, including a 39-page Google Doc, multiple 3-hour-plus VODs, and another 17-page Google Doc. But also one of the most confusing Twitch dramas of all time, all involving Bob7, Destiny, Melina, and Big Boss Bose. Bob7 and Melina began talking and becoming close. And this was nothing out of the ordinary, as Destiny and all Melina right. were in an open relationship together. I don't have any idea who these people are. I guess they must be big on Twitch, though, because if they're on Ms. Kiff's stream. With Destiny becoming <coughs> close with Bows as well. Things just got so confusing from there, but it can all be explained with allegations that Bob7 was abusing his power as an Austin Show recruiter by saying creepy-ass things to contestants, what and the hell? that he was also talking shit behind Destiny's back to Belina, with Bob7 refuting these claims, saying Destiny spent the last two months 
tried to ruin his life with these false allegations. This back and forth went on and on, with multiple other streamers getting involved, all with Bob7 getting fired from working on The Austin Show. His Twitter has since been inactive since December 31st, 2020. My Clips Oof. TV. My Clips TV was a website attempting to sell streamer clips as NFTs. Did they have permission to? No. With them even having Wreckful Clips on the website available for purchase. They're fucking selling Wreckful Clips. That's not nice. What do you expect, man? Do you expect these companies to be nice? Look at this, they're scum. Ms. Kiff was linked this website on stream and was able to find out the dude who was putting this all together was an ex-Twitch staff. They were able to get him in a call, and the more this dude talked, the deeper he dug his grave. In a system where um, a transaction only goes through if a streamer accepts it or a streamer lists the clips for sale. Yeah, you ab that, that's, that's absolutely not okay. As what he was doing, it was just illegal. This all ended with the dude, of course, closing the website for good. Four-player <laughs> podcast. Four-player podcast is on here just for the fact that they are the channel that popularized playing games on stream on Justin TV. Oh. Uh, oh, this guy knows what he's talking know. about. These videos are from 2008. And the way you can see how they created their own format for making live gaming commentary content <laughs> is quite oh cool God. to see. Look at he's trembling. I just want to hug him. They would also have a clip of them playing GTA 4 become so popular that a whole section in GTA 5 is a reference to that exact clip. Slow down, Scooter Brother! Scooter Brother! Scooter Brothers! Scooter Brother! <laughs> These guys were the true pioneers to video oh games. Oh my god. Streaming. Roblox Charity Stream. In 2014, the Roblox channel went live for a 24 hour charity stream. At some point in the stream, the screen went black, but the mic was still live and picked up a group of Roblox administrators making valid criticisms towards Roblox as a whole. One admin stated he had to fork out the money for a new worth PC because the company would not upgrade it themselves. Shit just wasn't out happening we couldn't get any traction on anything and we needed a computer so i just fucking went and bought the part and built it or explaining how the company just doesn't Damn. care about their department and how expendable they are take you long to realize that roblox doesn't give a fuck yeah. about our department <laughs> yeah they were doing fine before us and they'll do you know ironically enough That's almost sad. immediately after the stream three admins were fired Jack's smirking revenge, snow blocks, and a bit shift. The most awkward part about this was a few days later, Roblox went live again with the CEO of the company and Andrew Hack, who was another person present during the stream. And this whole stream of these two felt Yo, he looks so Andrew Hack looks so uncomfortable. It's like when your dad takes you out of school early so that you guys can go like do something that you shouldn't and your fucking mom found out about it and now you two are in the hot seat and your dad's just <laughs> your dad's either just gonna throw it all on you or he's gonna take it and you just sit there and look awkward very confusing and uncomfortable to watch as he's being practically blackmailed into doing it to be used as an example for other employees to slip up in the future the but <laughs> This is not the face of a man. This is not the face of a man who is okay. Those eyes are saying, help me. This is slip up in the future. The King Vaughn interview. Back in 2020, the Rolling Loud Twitch account had King Vaughn on for an interview segment. And all was well to begin with. They would grab chat messages and questions viewers had, and they would ask Vaughn them. It only got unsettling when a user by the name of Salty Knob 713 asked them to ask Vaughn if he'd ever do a feature with Model, Tyreek, P5, or Malcolm. Instantly, King Vaughn became extremely excited, telling them to say the names over and over again. Names, you want to do the features again? Uh, he'd have to scroll up. I can't even see hey, that shit. Hey, y'all, uh, listen to the names you said you want to do the features. Model, Tyreek, P5, or Malcolm. These were all the names of deceased rival gang members. And allegedly, King Vaughn had something to do with these four deaths, with him even serving time for the Malcolm case. All right, wait a second. Wait, wait a second. So if you guys have been around a couple days ago on stream, we learned about UK drill, right? And I don't know if King Vaughn... Okay, wait a second. We got to...
King Vaughn is a Chicago rapper. So it's the same type of thing, but so, okay, sorry. That's just like, so he does like American drill. And so I guess like we were, we learned, if you guys go watch, go back and watch the stream. We learned about um, UK drill and how in the songs they'll throw shade at people that are in rival gangs and stuff who have died most of the time or at least some of the time the rapper is taking or is admitting some form of guilt there so that's just like but in the end was acquitted of all charges big mike was sentenced to 16 years in prison for aggravated battery with a firearm and an additional 12 years for backing out of some type of deal with prosecutors the other suspect was acquitted of all charges and was able to walk out of the courtroom a free man. That other suspect was King Vaughn. Damn. This is a creepy moment caught live, especially with the off comments he made saying, I'll do a feature with them, but they probably don't have the money. And I'll do a feature with all them niggas. Tell them to send them money. Yeah, we need that bag. 100 racks. 100 racks a feet. Oh, you they got it. Level 7. Vampire oh, Craig. If you're ingrained in Mitch Jones' community, the name Vampire Craig is already something you're aware of. This guy was and is a horribly obsessive fan of his, believing him and Mitch will get married one day. There's an old VOD of him being added to a call with Mitch and Greek inside it. And once he joins, he just instantly just repeats that him and Mitch are together and that he's his boyfriend. It's Craig, man. It's Craig. Relax. I'm his boyfriend. No, no, no. You're not my boyfriend. You're not my boyfriend. Listen, Craig. I I'm gonna be real. I'm your boyfriend. No, no, no. You're not my boyfriend. You're not. You're not my boyfriend. Why would you say your boyfriend like that? No, no. Hey, hey, Brittany. Hush. Okay, be quiet. Mitch, I'm your boyfriend. Would you respect no, 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 your no, no, boyfriend? No. Now, from what I've said, this doesn't seem like anything too horrible. Just a case of a really weird obsessive fan. Except for the fact that this guy uploaded a video to Hub of him masturbating for Mitch Jones. The only proof of this video ever existing is a screenshot of it inside Howie's Twitch music video titled. Lose your subs. I've been roasted and stalked by a vampire gay. Poshy Brid. In February 2017, oh, streamer Poshy Brid began a 24 hour charity stream. Everything was going as planned. He was on his main game, World of Tanks, playing like normal. When he hops up and lets everyone know he's going for a cigarette break, one hour went by, then two, then five, and he never returned. Brian Vinalt passed away at the age of 35. He was a father of three and raising money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. The cause of death was of an accidental overdose of fentanyl. I'm sure no one knew what was going on behind the scenes, and oh. his passing was confirmed by a detective who had access to his Discord to inform his community of his passing. Someone with access to his Twitter account said- Bro, I just got- Oh my god. I don't know if you guys can see, but I just got chills when they said that he died of a fentanyl overdose. That's so sad. He had kids, too. Wow. Oh shit, wait. I am so sorry. I wow, I just spaced out there. Wow, I <laughs> I just spaced out. You guys are just watching me watch it. The Duke Bilgewater made comments of the global Twitch emote horror added of his boyfriend's fursona. His account was permabanned and everything went downhill from here. Streamers big and small began adding remove horror in their titles in an attempt to get him off the staff team. Account after account getting seven day bans and the official Twitch support mocking those banned. Another staff member joined in and said horror is going nowhere. Going as far as changing titles with remove horror and threatening to close the channel if the streamer were to change the title back. 
36 hours later, Twitch posted an apology, removing the emote named Nightlight, as it was not even supposed to be there in the first place, unbanning those unfairly banned, and removing so Horror as an admin. Now, don't get me wrong. There was genuine harassment from users to Horror, but he seemed to take it out on them, and then overstepped his authority as a staff member to just shut down anyone who was upset with him. With that, this will conclude the 2022 Twitch iceberg. I hope you all enjoyed and maybe learned a thing or two about events or people that you weren't aware of. Yo, Again, that's let me a know good if there video. are any errors or topics that need to be added for an updated iceberg. Have a good one and stay safe. All right. Let's, uh, let's see here. Boys, I know that I said we were going to play games and I'm sorry that I lied, but I have to get going soon here actually because it's almost 2 30 and i've got to take the boys out and then we gotta go pick up brenna so i had a lot of fun watching videos um i hope you guys enjoyed too here on chat um i might try to stream again later tonight uh we will be playing games if i stream we won't just be watching videos and stuff but sadly uh i do have to get off for now um so i just want to say one last time thank you guys if you guys are watching here live it means the world uh let me know in chat and it just it means a lot that you guys are watching but also if you guys are watching the vod on youtube uh it also means the world to me. It would mean even more if you would consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Um, and I guess, so these videos, I'm probably gonna cut this up, uh, do react, have videos on the channel for all of the stuff cut up if you just wanna see a certain part of the stream or the stream VOD will also be unlisted as a playlist on the channel. So thank you guys so much for watching. It really does mean the world. And I can't promise that I'll be back on tonight, but I'm going to try my best and maybe we'll continue the hardcore world. Um, otherwise, I'm probably going to be offline recording some stuff because I have a video that I'm hoping to get done this week that is a review of Tom Clancy's Breakpoint in 2022. And I think that that's going to be a good video. I like actually have been sitting down and like writing and like trying to make a production of it. And I'm really excited for it. So i guess that's it yeah that's that's all i got for you guys for right now um thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys later have a great day peace